Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Do check out our Buy and Avoid video if you're interested in winning one of four Battlestar Galactica codes on the Nintendo Switch. Little Town Hero from Game Freak has had a tumultuous marketing campaign up to launch with name changes and a lack of what seemed like any real focus. Footage was sparse and the overall idea of the game seemed a touch confusing. What's it all about then? Well, let's find out. <laughs> You get to name your adventure at the start of the tale, which is always a nice touch, and the game focuses heavily on that story between your character and his friends. The titular little town is where it plays out, and it seems to act as a haven of sorts for outsiders, with reference to the king taking in war refugees and others from the outside to live within its security and relative comfort. <laughs> Now I mentioned in our Everything You Need To Know video that the narrative between these companions reminded me of the film Stand By Me, with much of the focus given to the micro dialogues between them, of which the vast majority are excellently written and really quite funny. I was surprised how on point some of the jokes are, with reference to pop culture and memes subtly interwoven, in often curt ways so as not to be obvious and detract, but instead add a layer of character to the game. While in the earlier stages of the story, your focus will be on becoming a soldier, with your rival and friend, Matok, constantly on your case and trying to one-up you. Many of the sideline plots are to do with your main character, and his family origins. There is a desire in him to see what's outside of these walls, as many come, but few leave. And when monsters begin to show up, it's only a matter of time before things come to a head. And if I had to summarize the overall narrative adventure, it's like a storm in a teacup. Despite taking place in less than a mile square, the well-written interactions between characters and the often funny one-liners are quite captivating. Side content isn't overly complex and offers little real distraction, but again, the writing is decent enough that you don't really mind too much, with a host of interesting and unusual characters. Much of the game plays out in the town from a third-person perspective in a traditional RPG vein, with main quests shown as red bubbles above the heads of inhabitants and blue for side. One of the main purposes for the development team was to try and create a traditional RPG experience that didn't require the grind you might have in a normal JRPG. Right off the bat, I'll say this, they succeed and fail in equal measure, and we're going to find out why. Monsters are fought throughout the story as one-on-one, -on -one turn based boss sections. There are no enemies roaming the town, although they have kind of shoehorned in an area where you can choose to fight any of the monsters you've fought so far. And this essentially means while you don't have to grind, we've put in something so that you can grind if things get too difficult. Combat is the core of the game. It's the most interesting and frustrating aspect of it. Many of my comrades in arms at other channels had a nightmare in the earlier sections of combat, and I honestly thought they'd lost the plot until that one boss. Let's begin with how it works in a simple way as possible. For the sake of making sense, I'm going to call the ideas does it and is it. I know, I know, I'm not going to use those names. I'm going to call them skills. Your skills have an attack rating and a defense rating shown here. You choose the order you use these to defeat the opposing enemy's skills. Rather than telling you, I'll show you how this works. So, I have this bank of skills over here. Check. To use them, I need to first unlock them by spending some of my power points shown here. Still with me? Once I have them in this state, they can be used against the enemy's opposing skill. The aim here being to do enough damage to break theirs, and if you can break all of their skills, then you open up a chance to attack their main health bar, which is shown by hearts down the bottom of the screen. When you've taken out all of those, then they're going down. There are several new mechanics introduced, and as you progress, your skills will increase in potency by the skill points the game awards you after each fight. A stronger one might have more points in defense or attack, and you get to choose them on a traditional style branching tree system. This means you still to some degree may need to grind out improved stats, but it's not essential in air quotes to do so. 
Between rounds, you can roll a dice to move your character around a board game style map, which is shown from a top-down perspective, with different zones containing either characters who assist you by offering support skills or other items such as a cannon, chicken, or even a barrel. However, these can only be used if you have the necessary skill in your current lineup and it's ready to be fired off. There is a major problem with the combat as I see it, and it's the randomness taking place. Every battle you fight begins with giving you a random set of the skill ideas, and unfortunately, this randomness means that you can never fully predict or prepare for a rematch, and regardless of how much and how well you can react to the different enemy skills, they often have debuff effects that can totally throw off your preparation, removing your ability to use certain ones that you have ready. To that end, some fights are unwinnable, which should not be a possibility. A mechanic that relies on randomness like that is always a danger if you provide the opponent with too much power, and that definitely happens at times here. Up until the end of the game, it hadn't been an issue, but you can expect to spend up to two hours on single fights and then die regardless of how well you play. A real shame, as when it's working in your favour, it's very fun, and a system that feels uh, maybe a little inspired by the likes of Magic the Gathering and some other deck-based games. What is nice to see and perhaps an unresolved answer to the no grinding question is that they've essentially allowed you to uh, grind, which uh, kind of defeats the point. When you die in combat, you are awarded any skill points to spend before you can then restart that fight. Frustratingly though, if you decide to leave the game, it won't save those points, and you go back to the last save state. A massive irritation and oversight, and you may lose up to two or three hours of progress in gathering those points by losing a few times. It might sound like I really don't like Little Town Hero, but I do. I enjoy the combat a lot when it feels fair. Roll a bad hand though, and you're in for a frustrating experience. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and side quests are charming enough, and the brilliant writing makes good use of this tiny world. Controls are decent, but the RNG feeling moments are very frustrating and remove the skill from the player's hands. Gameplay scores 15 out of 20 and controls are solid but some slower camera movement and a strange fast travel system that seems to have a slight mind of its own in terms of not allowing you to actually use it half the time are problems. Controls also score 15 out of 20. Visually, Little Town Hero is a delightful looking game. There is clearly more than a slight influence from the Pokemon world, and the monster designs share some real similarities with different generations. Everything looks polished, and it runs smoothly at a nice 30 frames per second, however there are moments where it dips when you're moving around larger fields for example. My main issue with visuals is the lack of variety. The town they've built looks charming, but it's very small indeed. In a world where I have The Witcher 3 on Switch, I can't help but feel the town is just too little. The audio is from the mastermind behind The Undertale's score, and it's fittingly quirky. There are lively jingles and character theme tunes which work really well. I enjoyed the score for the most part and found it enhanced the excellent dialogue. One area of controversy, and has to be mentioned, are those speaking sounds. While I didn't mind them too much, I can see some people being literally put off by them. They're quite jarring at first, and don't really seem to fit the aesthetic at all. Visuals for me score 17 out of 20. What is here is great, but there needs to be more of it. I love the music, but I didn't feel the speaking sounds added anything. Audio scores 16 out of 20. The game costs £22.49, €24.99 or $24.99, and I think that price point is about right here. It's a shame we haven't got a physical release at launch, and the 12 or so hour runtime is certainly far less than most would perhaps expect from the team. Game length though isn't my benchmark for a good title, but this not only feels a touch too short, but the random number generator elements of some fights can lead to that time being artificially longer than really it would be if they'd introduced an entirely skill-based system. Value scores 14 out of 20. Now it might sound like I didn't enjoy Little Town Hero, 
but it's absolutely not the case. It's a charming title, and that story delivery makes it a worthwhile one, but unfortunately some confusing mechanics initially can make the experience difficult to get to grips with. And even after fully realizing the controls, discovering that that combat relies so heavily on that randomness is a major knock. I personally wait for a sale, it scores a switch up score, of 77%. A big thanks to all of you who support the channel and our patrons. I believe we're up to 105 now, which is incredible. If you want to join those guys, all the links are down below. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!